Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Reston. Um, thank you very much, um, Mr Acting Deputy President, and I too rise today um, to make a small contribution um, on the uh, motion put by um, Senator Muir to acknowledge the, um, the substantial contribution that motorsport makes to not just the, um, the economic um, fabric of our society but also our social culture as well. And, um, can I acknowledge the, the, uh, the commitment that um, Senator Muir has made to this particular topic? He's a great advocate for the, the motoring industry. Uh, in Australia, and particularly for motorsport in Australia, um, and also to acknowledge that uh, my fellow whip is uh, is also a great supporter of motorsport, um, and often comes to work of a of a Monday morning, um, telling of exploits of chasing uh, driving his car very fast up and down hills, that, um, of course uh, in controlled environments and certainly not on the road. No. Um, <laughs> well, well, you come from, as I say, Senator Billick, um, through you, Mr Chair, Senator Billick comes from Tasmania. She may well know something about Senator Bushby's uh, driving habits uh, more than I do because I don't drive on the same roads as Senator Bushby as a general rule, but I'm sure he's a terribly law-abiding citizen when it comes to uh, obeying the road rules. But um, look, it is actually a much more serious issue than, uh, than just the, the fun and frivolity of the last uh, few minutes. Um, the social and economic benefits of motorsport in Australia are quite significant. Um, and, you know, apart from the, the fun that's associated with, uh, with driving a car very fast in a controlled environment and, and a safe environment, um, you know, there are some really huge benefits that go to our communities. If you have a look in my home state of South Australia um, and your home state, Mr Acting Deputy President of South Australia, motorsport has played a very big role in our state for a very, very long time. In fact, it was back in the 1930s that the first Grand Prix was actually held in South Australia. And I don't know whether you realise, but it was actually held in Victor Harbour, Mr Acting Deputy President. Um, and so, it was, uh, whilst everybody uh, it was great acclaim when the, uh, the Grand Prix came to, back to Australia in 1985 uh, and was held in Adelaide, everybody sort of thought this was the first time that a Grand Prix was held in Australia, but that wasn't the case. We were actually early adopters of the concept of, um, of fast Formula One motorsport. The, um, the Grand Prix um, was, a, was a fantastic um, economic contributor to the South Australian economy, and for, for most of the, uh, the ten years that South Australia had the privilege and the luxury of owning um, uh, the, the rights to hold Australia's Grand Prix in Adelaide, it was a very, very beneficial thing for us to have, because it wasn't just the fact that, um, you know, that, that the, the expenditure on the event itself, and, and, and look, I admit in many years it actually cost us money in South Australia to put the event on, but the knock-on impact of the economic activity that was, uh, was um, uh, achieved through the event was very, very significant. And it was many, many times the amount of money that was invested um, by the South Australian government in getting the event to South Australia was returned to the community through, um, through visitation, increased economic activity. And it was interesting that, um, actually to, to find that um, you know, in, these, uh, in these instances, just uh, some statistics, that um, you know, every, every um, Grand Prix um, had attendances in excess of 250,000 um, people, uh, but also that the economic benefit um, in just things like the Clipsal 500, as an example, you know, is somewhere around half a billion dollars a year for South Australia. So you can see it is a very significant contribution. Um, but talking about the Clipsal 500, it's, it's actually quite interesting, um, a little anecdotal story. Um, during uh, the, the Grand Prix uh, one year, the Clipsal, um, the, the, the um, the uh, supercar drivers decided that they actually wanted to have, be paid appearance money at the Grand Prix. And up until that time, the, the supercars had just been a, uh, a support, or the touring cars had just been a support event for the Grand Prix. And, uh, and so the, uh, the decision was, uh, was thought to be made that we'd tell the touring cars that we wouldn't worry about paying them, and if they decided they weren't going to come to the Grand Prix, well, so be it. That was bad luck. Um, luckily, um, some reasonable wisdom prevailed, and a survey was undertaken of the South Australian public. And very interestingly, it found out that in excess of 60 per cent of the people that actually attended the Grand Prix uh, in Adelaide actually went because they wanted to see the touring cars, not because they wanted to see the actual Grand Prix cars. And it was actually from that particular piece of information and that survey that was undertaken that it became really evident when the time came um, where the Grand Prix had 
the, the, uh, the, the rights for the Grand Prix had become so excessive from, uh, from FOCA that there was no longer um, the, the economic benefit that was generated was starting to be eroded away. It became very evident that the, uh, the touring cars were probably something that would have the capacity to generate reasonably similar amounts of economic activity in South Australia, but without the extraordinary expense of the, uh, the rights to buy the Grand Prix. And uh, so when they went to Victoria, we sent it to Victoria, and I think they they were quite happy to have it for a while. I'm not sure that they still are, but uh, South Australia now has uh, the pre uh, the premier touring car event for Australia, the Clipsal 500. But whilst we can talk about all these really major events, um, Mr. President, that have uh, that have a, an economic activity and benefit to to Australia from motorsport, it's also quite interesting to realise what actually of the benefits to the car industry and to the um, a car accessories car and car part manufacturers um, across the whole of, uh, of Australia and across the whole of the world for that matter um, and also indirectly in car sales. You've only got to look at the continued um, uh, competition that occurs between Ford and Holden to, to realise that there's a benefit there in terms of car sales but also um, just the developmental costs that you get from uh, or the developmental benefits that you get from cars because obviously driving a car at extreme speeds um, you have to make sure that they're extraordinarily safe so the safety components the developmental components that come from racing cars is also um, an extremely important thing so as i said there's huge economic benefit from the big events but there's also economic benefits that can be generated in our regional communities um, i for one um, have been known to be a bit of a petrol head have raced uh, have raced in the classic Raced in the classic Adelaide, but like Senator Bushby, I always obey by the road rules. So I um, only uh, only drive fast when the roads are closed, and I've got permission to do so. But um, the economic benefits in our regional communities for things like rallying, for things like um, you know off-road buggy racing, for the, um, the local speedways in our regional communities, all of these smaller motor racing events have massive individual economic benefit for the communities in which they, uh, they operate. They also provide our young people in our communities the opportunity to be able to drive fast and do things that all young kids like to do, um, but without, uh, without the, um, the added risk um, of being on the road. So I think if you have a look at, the, at, at motorsport, it's far more than the economic benefit that you see from big events. There is such a huge knock-on effect um, in, our, in our local communities of being able to give our young kids the opportunity to learn how to drive fast in controlled conditions, not on roads where they've got um, uh, they've obviously got um, medical um, attention should the unfortunate situation re, uh, require that they may need it. So, um, as I said, I'm a great supporter of, uh, of motorsport. I'm a great supporter of, uh, of Senator Muir's motion today to acknowledge the economic and social benefits of motorsport. Um, and I'd just, uh, just like to commend Senator Muir for um, his continued interest, his ongoing interest and his support for motorsport in Australia. Thank you.